And good evening, everybody. Welcome once again to Branko Broadcast. I am Bob Branko. We're very pleased this evening to have with us Duncan Holmes. Welcome, Duncan. You can start out by telling us about yourself, and then our listeners will be more than happy to ask you whatever they'd like to know. Well, thank you, Bob. It's good to be on your show. I've heard your name. I've not read any of your material, but I've heard your name mentioned in a number of from a number of people. Uh, it's a good to that a number of uh, friends whom I know have shown up and others that I don't know are here. Uh, it seems I know more of you than I uh, don't know, but uh, from all over the place, and that is wonderful. Okay, well, Walt Whitman wrote a poem called Song of Myself, and uh, that's about what you're going to get right now, because who can talk better about them this, about a person than a person's self, if you know what I mean. I was born in New York City in, well, I'm going to go ahead and say it, July 14, 1946. I was born of Southern parents. My dad was from South Carolina. My mother was from Alabama. And I guess they met in New York and got married in Mexico and yada, yada, yada. I won't go into all of that. But that was way back in the fabulous 30s and 40s. Uh, we were, I spent the first three years of my life, I have a twin brother, Bill, who lives in Rockville, Maryland, and uh, he's partially sighted, he retained a good bit of his sight, enough that he doesn't need a cane or a dog. In fact, he's quite the avid photographer. <laughs> and then I have an older sister who lives in Greenville, South Carolina, my, and uh, uh, is, uh, is retired now from the uh, South Carolina Department of Oak Rehab. Uh, at an early age, according to my mother, I started to play the piano. I know I was banging the piano as, uh, as uh, young as I can remember and driving my family crazy. And then my mother used to tell me that uh, I, that she started to sing Three Blind Mice and I could pick out the melody. Well, I, well, I may, I may have been three, I may have been blind, but mouse, uh-uh. But anyway, that's, that's a story I tell uh, many times when I go share at places and I guess they decided without me knowing it that I was making too much of a racket on the piano and murdering classical music and at age eight while I was a student at the Maryland School for the Blind I began taking lessons and when continued on through college and graduate school uh, I attended the Maryland School for the Blind from kindergarten in fact I spent two years in kindergarten right up through high school and uh, many of us were in schools for the blind, predating computers and so on. So Braille was a big thing, for, especially for us totals, and I am totally blind. By the way, I was born with um, retinopathy of prematurity. I graduated from Maryland School for the Blind in 1966. Uh, and by, yes, it is the 50th anniversary of uh, the graduation, but I'm not doing anything about it. I went on to college at uh, Shenandoah Conservatory of Music in Winchester, Virginia, now University, Shenandoah University, and uh, majored in piano performance. And what what you can do with that kind of a degree would be hard to tell. I think nowadays, uh, with music being what it is, I would have done a lot more with music business and with uh, learning the uh, possibly uh, the re recording, a bit of the, what goes into the recording industry and so on. There's a lot more you can do with music now than teach and it was given I think it was a given according to the faculty that I would be going back to teach blind students which was not at all in my mind I wanted to perform I wanted to but I also knew that what could I do with a performance degree well to, to um, postpone the inevitable I after I graduated I I did not want to go up to some rehab center I'd already spent my life at a school for the blind, thank you very much, and I didn't want to have to go up and share another room with another person who's blind and have to take all of these independent living skills away from home when, in my opinion, even now I think it could be it could be taught better at home where you are in your familiar surroundings rather than go off to some place and you come back and you have to relearn on your own equipment and stuff. So I went to graduate school, uh, first at the University of Maryland, I tried a couple of conservatories. They turned me down. Uh, then I went to the University of Maryland, and I hated it. I was, I despised it. And then it was accepted at the University of North Texas. Well, back then it was North Texas State University in Denton. 
and went there starting out in a performance degree, but they had some probationary stuff. I guess I wasn't convincing enough to them in my playing. So eventually uh, I switched to a music ed degree with a piano concentration, thinking that I might teach piano. Well, subsequently, I discovered I hated teaching piano, and those that I did teach, I lost. So I, I, I've taught about five students in my life, and I forget it. <laughs> but the biggest, but the biggest part of the story I need to get to right now, because um, it's going to have, it has a significant impact on my mindset and on my life now, and I need to go into something. Uh, about my own spiritual life. I did not grow up in a Christian home. I grew up in a church, uh, and not in a church home either. But we grew up, I grew up in a decent home. We were taught right from wrong. Uh, we were disciplined and punished if we did wrong. And our folks wanted us to excel in what we did. I mean, they really were pushing me to excel in my piano playing. That was one thing I could do because my other grades at school I can tell you I flunked ACT tests, I flunked the SATs, and a number of colleges would not have me because of that. But Shenandoah did accept me. But going back to the spiritual aspect of it all, we uh, I remember we had, um, the boy came to this school, to MSB in my ninth grade year. Uh, his name was Bill Curtis. Bill was partial, si uh, partial sight. He was from Milford, Delaware. To this day, I don't know what's happened with him. But Bill had there's something about him. Well, first of all, he was so darn serious, and I think kind of a shy guy and everything. But one thing he did have, he he told me something I'd never heard before. Uh, he came up to me and asked me, "Are you saved?" I said, "What are you talking about?" And he began to talk to me about this personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, no uncertain terms, he said, "You want to go to heaven? That's the only way." And Bill and I became darn good friends, and eventually he became my roommate, one of the best roommates I'd ever had. And one night, I came home from a Boy Scout meeting, came back to the dorm, long since disgusted with Boy Scouts, but too afraid to quit. And uh, now I look back, I'm not downing the Boy Scouts, we just outgrew the room, we were a noisy bunch of bullies, we were, <laughs> uh, you know, I can't remember a lot of good about it, uh, but got back to the dorm and I knelt down by my bed and I said, I know I got problems. I uh, dumb in school. I mean, I, I don't want to go to hell, Jesus. Uh, please come into my life. And uh, for, I believe from that moment on, I became a new cre uh, creation in Christ. The old things passed away, the new has come. Uh, I didn't know that back then. I didn't know much of anything. Uh, concerning anything spiritual. I'd read various publications from certain cult groups and hated every bit of it. <laughs> and, uh, but somehow things, uh, my life took on a different uh, a difference. I couldn't explain it. But growth was slow. I was stubborn. I was immature. Uh, and it took a lot of pain, a lot of uh, trying, uh, dealing with the sighted world when I went to college. And growth, again, was slow. Uh, a lot of my growth came, by the way, thanks to a, um, a blind Episcopal priest named Harry Sutcliffe. Harry was the chairman of the Bible department at Hadley School. Died in 1987, I believe, and a wonderful man. But Harry was kind of the guy who dis kind of discipled me. My dad died when I was in seventh grade. Harry kind of became like a father figure to me. Uh, they call him, people call him Reverend Sutcliffe, Father Sutcliffe. I, I knew him as Harry. That's the way I, I, we each other. And uh, we corresponded by tape, and he kind of nurtured me along in the faith. Uh, yes, there were other ways too, but after college and graduate school, um, what was I going to do with what I'd learned? Well, I hung around Denton. I, I, played at very, I played dinner music at a couple places, and then I went, then I got an opportunity to play in Dallas at a restaurant in an apartment complex. I moved into the complex. And the restaurant went bankrupt after one month, uh, and I only made tips. Thank God for SSI back then. Uh, but eventually I found work in a jewelry uh, company owned by some Christians, and I, I worked there for eight, six, eight months. 
and then uh, wound up going on the road with a former Metropolitan Opera singer named Calvin Marsh. And Calvin and I worked with uh, Besar Shalom, which means House of the Prince of Peace in Hebrew. It's a um, Hebrew Christian group, and we were kind of their PR people. We traveled, we traveled the country, uh, churches, schools, anywhere we could get a hearing, and we're doing PR work for them. Uh, we were on the 700 Club a couple times. I'm going to um, go back a little bit and kind of mention a few of the uh, essential points in my life. I worked with him for a couple years. And during that time, I got married to the gal that I met in graduate school, Sharon Ballou from Texas. And uh, we got married in 76, and Sharon didn't find traveling with <laughs> on the road very much to her liking. And I didn't like seeing her unhappy either. So we eventually moved back to Texas. I tried teaching piano. That was a flop. I played dinner music. I just uh, worked at the jewelry company, but it wasn't the same. I wanted to go back on the road, and eventually I was able to. I, uh, but I worked at uh, I worked a number of things: housing department at University of North Texas. I was a desk clerk. Got got suspended without pay for some paperwork blunders and uh, commission for the blind down my back. I didn't like the rehab counselor that came out to haunt me. Ah, you know and. Uh, I think the most liberating thing uh, was when we moved down here to Fredericksburg, which is a tourist town. Sharon got her teaching degree before moving down here in 86, and we moved that, uh, down here, and I went self-employed, and I've been self-employed ever since 1986, and uh, make my living uh, by doing what I believe God has called me to do, and that is to go on the, uh, well, is to do, well, any playing I do is for him, but I feel especially at peace when I'm doing a program at a church or Christian school or other places and sharing about Jesus and also in the case of especially public schools or places where in non-church places where I can share about how I deal with blindness. I call, you know, and I call myself blindness educator, you might say in that respect, decided people. A uh, few turning points in my life, and then I'm going to open the floor for questions. Of course, the first one you heard, my, my coming to Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Uh, another turning point was um, marriage, 1976, to Sharon, whom I'd known in college, and mostly grew to know through tape correspondence. She was in the military after a while and was in Germany. She was a, she was a Specialist 5 in the Army, Specialist 5 in the U.S. Army. But we, of course, we we'd say we couldn't court, so we tape record, you know. But we did get married, and it was a rough start. Uh, but we grew to know and love each other and stick with each other. And this August it'll be 40 years uh, that we've been married. Other turning point was the birth of our daughter Hannah Elizabeth in 1992. Yes, she has eyesight, and. Uh, it was a challenge bringing her up. No, she didn't get into drugs or anything, but uh, but uh, she and I, we had a wonderful relationship till she got into her teens. <laughs> and now it, we're we're mellowing out, but uh, it was a tough. It was tough then, but but she got through it. And uh, Anna went to Ringling College in Florida, in uh, Sarasota, and majored in art, in uh, illustration, and now she is a product designer and illustrator at EK Success Brands in Kansas City, Missouri. It lives with her friend Ross, and they've been out there since Hannah graduated from college uh, two years ago, almost. Another turning point, I never liked animals growing up very much. Uh, dogs bit, cats scratched, but what led me to go get a guide dog was that uh, I was reluctantly going to try to go for my doctorate degree, uh, thinking that might help me get work, better work, so I went back to North Texas and took a couple courses and hated it. And the campus had changed. No, not as many side. Well, there were sidewalks, but everything, you know, uh, melded into each other. And the campus was much harder to get around. And I'm not the greatest with the cane. Uh, and I'm not great with north, south, east, west either. Uh, no spatial relationships. They space me out, shall we say. So I went to Leader Dogs and got Mac in 1984, and he was wonderful. And uh, we hit it off well. Uh, we had our ups and downs, but uh, he died in 93, just 
before I was able to retire him. And then we had Topaz from ninety from uh, the fall of ninety three to two thousand three, and he died Christmas Eve two thousand three after nine and a half years of work. And then I had Lucky from two thousand four until his death on October two thousand fourteen, and so we had been together ten and a half years, and I just retired him. He he wanted to work till the end, and uh, I'm not going for another one now. I've had three, and I'm sorry. I I I'm right. And besides, I have a cat. <laughs> But another final turning point uh, in our lives. In 2009, Sharon was diagnosed with stage 2B breast cancer uh, in the left breast. And it was decided to have that removed, plus a couple of lymph nodes. Uh, and she went through the chemo and the radiation. And, of course, being her husband, you lived through it. I lived through it with her. And it was a bummer of a summer. But we somehow got through it, and uh, she is in remission, has been, I'd say, since uh, probably the end of 2009. Um, she uh, does take a f hormone blocker called Famara. That's about all she takes, though, as far as the uh, cancer medicine. And she's doing very well. Uh, she's in good, very good health. I'm still playing. I play locally at... Uh, my church, Hill Country Church, formerly Hill Country Evangelical Free. I am uh, also, uh, I play frequently at a hotel called the Hangar Hotel, because it's, it's called the Hangar, because the airport, the local airport, uh, it's on the grounds there, or the hotel's on the airport grounds. So I play at their lounge, the officers' club lounge, on occasion, frequent, you know, frequent occasions. And then I do work playing at nursing homes, and uh, I do two of them that month and month, and then I do a rhythm band at one nursing home that is strictly voluntary. I um, also, I do, but the main thing is I do play anywhere, any church that will have me, any Christian or public school that will have me as, as, uh, for no freebies. I don't like doing freebies if I can help it. Uh, but I do a number of these places anywhere on the road where I'm invited. I uh, just came to New York, State New York, where I did a tour in January and uh, hope, hoping to go to South Carolina in April and uh, some other places. So, um, and, I'm, and I've been doing this now, you might say, for, well, I, for almost 30 years. So that's the gist of it. I know I've um, sort of been blabbing on, but uh, I would not trade it for anything. No, not, not once what I traded for anything for the life I had, my B.C. days, you might say. Okay, Bob? Anyone with questions? Yes. Can you hear me? Ed Fetish, go ahead. Okay, thank you. I have several questions. Actually, you don't have to answer them all. I don't want to monopolize the time, but I think they're very varied and diversified. First of all, uh, I'm similar to you in the sense that I used to do music as well, but I was confined strictly to clubs and stuff. And then when I got a regular full-time job uh, with the state of New Jersey, that kind of, you know, had to subside a bit, and of course now things are very different. They have people coming in with keyboards, and I'm sure you know that. And I have just a small one, a 61 keyboard, and you need a car, and I, I'm single, and I'm by myself. So it, that sort of went down the tubes. But I kind of wondered, now that you're doing this, what kind of music you play? Because most of the music of today that the young kids like isn't very... Uh, very applicable for us, I don't think, for the piano. And I used to play a lot of cocktail and, and standards when I did it, so that was one question. The second thing is sort of related. You mentioned working with an opera singer, and I wondered how you did that, whether you learn by rote or whether you use Braille music notation you know, to learn the arias or whatever you had to know. And the third question, and then I'm finished, is... Uh, I know some of you people know each other in the evangelical uh, situation that you're in, just as it, with any other common denominator. I wondered if you knew Ken Metema at all. I, I knew him from, he had worked in a mental hospital, 
um, in the music therapy, and I was uh, there for the summer uh, in, in an intake office handling that, and I met him, and uh, we used to have a lot of fun together. Those are my questions. <laughs> okay, now let's we'll have take, some answers. <laughs> let's take, all right, let's take them, Ed, and I know you from Newsreel, and uh, let's, take right. them, let's take these in, um, from the last. I've met Ken Miedema. I've heard him a number of times. I haven't heard about him recently, but I know he's out in San Francisco, and he's strictly songwriting and touring when he can. Uh, so I've known, and I admire him. In fact, he was kind of a role model for me. And the second thing, when I worked with Calvin, he had left the opera field, but I did learn everything strictly by ear. Now, I learned with Braille music in college, and I still do for classical and some other things, and it's very tedious. You know, it's an arduous. Sure is. It is. It's kind of like here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon recept, precept, rule upon rule. And it's uh, measure for measure, phrase for phrase, dot for dot. And you've got to put it both together and hope it comes out right. Yeah, you do, which was uh, which slowed my learning considerably. And the uh, so I met so when Calvin and I sang, I used I uh, listened to recordings. Um, sometimes he had a person sight read for me. Uh, whenever we were on the road, we had we would meet uh, maybe another person who was good at sight reading. So we had we had quite the repertoire. Um, a lot of the liberated Wailing Wall songs, uh, Stuart Dowerman, Jews for Jesus, all those. But then we did own, a, we did arrangements of hymns, uh, this little light of mine, stuff like that. The uh, the first question about, uh, and then your question about the the clubs. Well, most of the people that hear me at the lounge are senior citizens anyway, and we use a regular piano there. And I do have a keyboard here at home, a Casio Privia 130, but. Uh, I barely see any young people at any of my concerts except schools. And the music of today is not applicable for my singing voice. And why? And I can't stand an electronic, electrified voice as so many of them have. Um, and, yes, they use keyboards that are far too complicated for me to understand. Uh, Harley and I Even were talking with a about degree. <laughs> they didn't well, have the keyboards then, though, either. No, they did not have the keyboards back when we were we, – uh, they had – back at our conservatory, they had George Steck uprights, and we thought, well, Steck, they stink. And we had uh, Grant. We had um, a couple Steinway Grants and some Yamahas and Kawhis and a Baldwin. Are you familiar and, with the Hammond B3 at all? Uh, organ or piano? Hammond organ. I'm not familiar with Hammond And that Morgan. was the real workhorse. That they gave it up, but uh, it did everything. And I, I played it for a while, and uh, it, you know, you had to learn a lot of drawbar combinations to really make it work for you. You know, change your harmonics and stuff. But yeah. it was could be very effective depending what you wanted to do with it. Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but thank you, Ed. And uh, if anybody else, thank you. Like, sure. Thank you. If anybody else wants to ask, <laughs> anyone else. Thanks. Duncan, it's Bo Jane. I want to know, I'm, I'm curious about this. There is a lot of this um, contemporary Christian music that's out now. It's, it's got the rock uh, feel to it that they use in a lot of the churches. I still, hymns like, hymns like How Great Thou Art, and it, to me the old hymns have the imagery in them that, that, that this contemporary music lacks. I want to know what you think. There's room for both. If the music is well written and if it's scripture, uh, it's scriptural based. Scripture based. Yes, there is room yeah. for both. Uh, I listen to a, a good bit of it. I mean, I have in my, I have my radio on K Love sometimes, mm -hmm. or uh, you know. But uh, I think, I think the thing, I think the thing of it is uh, nowadays. Like I say, we have a blended worship service at our church, and uh, my only problem with um, some of the Christian music is. If I just put on any station, I can't tell if I'm hearing Christian or otherwise uh, until I listen more carefully into the uh, to the lyric. Yep. And the lyrics, you got to have the lyrics uh, be prominent. Uh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I mean, it's scripturally based, but it's ugh, please. It can well, it can get monotonous, but that's an old one. I mean, that goes back to some of the earlier Pentecostal type things. That's know. true. That's true. I think one of my favorites nowadays is. Ten Thousand Reasons, Bless the Lord, O oh My Soul, uh, by Rat. What was his name? Matt uh, Matt Redman, I think it is. Mm -hmm. Australian guy, uh, or anybody that does it. Okay, 
that that was my that was my question. I was curious because you were talking to Ed about you know the music, and I thought, ooh. <laughs> yeah. well, I'm glad you did, you asked that. Yes. Anybody else? Okay, Duncan. This is Harley. Can Duncan, you give me a um, oh, I'm sorry. You go ahead. Harley, Eddie you first. go first. Well, I, uh, uh, you mentioned that 10,000 reasons. We just did that Sunday for oh, Sunday at church, and we had our Haiti team sing it. Oh, wow. So they sang the chorus in Creole. So it's like, hallelujah. And, uh, you know, we have a lot in common. I learned a lot from Duncan by listening to his recording since I also play by ear. And uh, he's a far superior classical musician to myself. But, um, you know, you learn from everybody. And uh, we do a monthly conference call with musicians to interact with each other about what's going on, any prayer concerns that we have. So, you know, Duncan is a real blessing to me. And so I'm just honored to be on the call. And uh, uh, so that's, I went to MSB as well, graduated in 73. And, uh, you know, our journeys have certain parallels because I remember hearing you at a day camp when I was a kid. And I said, man, that cat can play. Oh, the and, lighthouse. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Lighthouse and, uh, camp. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. And then we got together about umpteen years later somehow. And, uh, you know, we've been... Interacting ever since, I, I I learned a lot from his music. Tremendous, tremendous performance at a school that he just did in this tour recently, and it's just good stuff. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. All right. <laughs> and next. the lady, you're next. I don't know who you were. I couldn't identify you, but you're next. Hi, Duncan. It's Robin. Of course, yes. I've known you for eons. That's right. <laughs> and I'm really glad to be able to come out to the conference and um. I don't know if it's appropriate for me to mention about your CDs. I have several of them. Yes. Uh, yeah, we we have about three that are in print right now. Uh, one is the latest one is, done, is uh, live from Fredericksburg, 2013. And then we have hymns, spirituals, and a new song. And I think we may, well, the Christmas one, I think we just sold the last of uh, uh, that. We won't get that out till probably, oh, before next Christmas. And then we have uh, in concert, 2009. But but you may have some that are also out of print. <laughs> so uh, oh have, yes, yeah, you have uh, probably live, uh, live and alive, and uh, they had and uh, life songs. Those had my guide dog Topaz singing on. Uh, yep, he's just a closer walk with me. <laughs> right. Oh, he, sure do. Yeah. Yes. Well, Robin and I'll tell you all. I've known Robin and 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 Sister Barry for years, and. They were some of the stalwarts that would come when I came back to MSB to do concerts. You gals were were right there, and uh, I appreciated the folks who came out. Few in number were we, but you came out. Everybody. Yeah, exactly. And of course, at that time, I was a staff member then at MSB. That's right. You sure were, and uh, that was that was really cool. Uh, love to get out to the Vegas area again. I'd have to have the connections with some area churches or, sure. or schools and places to do that. But I would love, I'd love to come out because I know some people uh, who've come out, who've come to camp every year. I go um, for you all. I go to a camp in um, down in, in near the Houston area in May. And the Gospel Association for the Blind, which some of you probably know about, uh, sponsors a camp called we call it Camp Salome as in John chapter 9, the Pool of Siloam, S-I-L-O-A-M. And uh, I've been staff pianist for that camp for years. And uh, uh, so so uh, we had a number of people from Vegas who came out, uh, oh, a couple of years ago. They haven't been back, but they came out a couple of years ago. But, you know, but uh, we've had one or two uh, guides who have come back from Vegas, I think. But uh, I'm always grateful when we have new campers that come out this year. It'll be the 21st to the 28th of May, by the way, if you're interested. You know, Duncan, speaking of modern-day Christian singers, there's a singer that I've heard of, at least here in the local area. Uh, I don't know how popular she is nationwide. You could always Google her and listen to a couple of her really great, upbeat songs. Her name is Mandisa, M-A-N-D-I-S-A. -S Does that yeah. name ring a bell? She was a contestant on American Idol, wasn't she? I think she is a great singer, in my opinion. Yes, uh, did a song about overcoming. And uh, did you had you ever met her? No, but her claim to fame around here is a song that one of our local radio stations used as its morning theme song. It's called Good Morning. 
It's by Mandisa featuring rap artist Toby Mac. Yes, Toby Mac is another Christian artist, and uh, they're um, they're both good. I take it she's probably down in. I take it that, that she's in Nashville, but I'm not sure now. But uh, I take it that's where a lot of them are based out of her Nashville or L.A. You know, or or Muscle Shoals, one of those places. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, she's very very good. Yes, I have to agree. I mean, gosh, wow, she she is good. All right, anybody else want to comment? Anybody else have any other questions? I guess I thought of one. Okay. Don, your turn. Okay. Uh, Duncan, yeah, this is Don from Massachusetts. Uh, you mentioned uh, rhythm band. Uh, uh, is that jazz or uh, what did you mean by rhythm band? Well, do you remember the kindergarten ta- days when they handed us the little sticks and triangles and bells and tambourines? Yes, yes, yes. And we all beat time to Susan Marches? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, uh, well, that's what we do at the nursing home. Everybody gets a little bell or stick. Kids, those who can, some of them, yeah, I don't want to hear. Okay, okay. <laughs> and they just want to sit there and I said, no idleness. Get in there and play. Or if you're not going to play, tap your foot, you know. Oh okay. yeah, yeah. I follow you now. Yeah, uh, when you said rhythm band, uh, the first thing that came to mind was jazz. No, this was this is uh, just like kindergarten, and a lot of I've right, done this right, with, yeah, yeah. And by the way, I've done this with a number of nursing homes, and it's great therapy for them. It gets them out of their shell. It gets oh them yes, away. yes, it, it does. Gets, gets them away from watching the Price is Wrong, and uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, right. and, and the. Uh, and the the old and the restful, you know, and all those things. The uh, wheel of I, misfortune. Yeah, the wheel of misfortune. <laughs> yeah. uh, now tell me, Duncan. Uh, yeah, is there any other kind of music uh, you play? Um, uh, yes. Uh, do you play folk music or? Well, you know, it's I, I could play folk to a certain extent, but pianos aren't folk instruments generally. But I can no, play that's folk true. songs. I do. Uh, folk I tell. Music. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, I'm sorry I interrupt. Uh, no, right. I was just going to say, yeah, folk music is more the guitar. And... Right. Dulcimer, mandolin, uh, auto harp, all those wonderful instruments. But I, right, uh, right, yes. But I do, I tell people I'll play almost anything but rap, dirty country, and heavy metal. I can't play those three. How can you get a piano to talk? You know, and then, then, then the heavy metal, <laughs> you can... You can prepare a piano with nails and stuff like John Cage uh, we used to do, but you can't get it to go psychedelic. Yeah, uh, yeah I like country music, uh, I like but I'm very, yeah, I'm very particular about country music. Uh, there's only certain kinds I like. Well, that's about the way I take individual songs, but don't give me things like Teach Me to Cheat and Lonely women make good lovers or any of that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't have time for that. <laughs> oh, but John Cage was so wonderful. Yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> and who's that? Oh, My no. name is Joan. Uh, uh, people call me Joni, and I'm from New Jersey. And I remember you from Newsreel a long time ago. I stopped subscribing, but now I've started to subscribe. I mean, I'm subscribed to it again. And no, weren't you, really were you on the VIP, uh, the v, uh, one of the chat sites online? Oh, that might have been a different. Okay. Okay. Yeah, uh, it was. I don't think it was. Well, it was on eVoice many years ago. Okay, well, this might be where I've heard of you. Yes, because well, your name is very familiar. Okay. Oh well, I'm an old time radio junkie. Oh so, yeah, so are uh, a bunch of us. So am I. I love old time radio. Uh, oh, that's wonderful. Yes. And, and uh, old music too. I love. Uh, Music from the the teens, the twenties, the thirties, the forties. I like music, what is it, such as I'm hearing on your chimes there. That's nice. <laughs> There's a nice clock there. Okay. Thank you. I have a lot of clocks. <laughs> oh, good. Okay, that's great. Oh well, well thank you, Joni, and uh, I appreciate that. Okay. John, can I have one more question for you, sir? What kind of stuff do you use in rhythm band? I mean, what kind of tunes do you play for? Them? Oh gosh. Uh, being this is a German community, originally I've done some of the old German things, Wooden Heart and the uh, Garden Waltz and uh, Herr Schmidt. Uh, uh, and uh, then I throw in a, I throw in some polkas and I'm yeah. In, yeah more than the beer barrel. I that's overdone. But uh, yeah, yeah. Steiner and uh, <laughs> Pennsylvania polka. And then I throw in a I'll throw in a march under the double eagle. 
stuff like that. And I'll throw in some of the old tunes of the uh, 20s and 30s, some of the livelier ones. Even when we do, when I do uh, gospel songs, I will not do in the garden. I won't do sad. I won't do stuff that's real slow. I'll take stuff like in the sweet by and by, and I'll jam. I'll 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 uh, I'll soup jazz it up because I figure in heaven we're going to dance anyway. So uh, none of this sentimental, uh, you know, drip drip. And uh, a lot of the stuff from the as beautiful as it was in the, in the 19th century. I, I got. I'm on. A, I'm afraid if I. If I play some of that stuff, they're going to be they're going to be on the floor weeping, you know. And I frankly want them. I, I, they need a little happiness. They need a little pep. And I figure, by golly, we're going to be dancing up there. So start rehearsing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I Anyone it. else? Yeah, this is Susan Jones. Um, um, Duncan, I wonder if if you would. Uh, be okay with like giving your email or whatever if, if anybody wants to correspond with you or if, if you do email I don't know I do I do um, I I I don't do I don't like a lot of forward stuff by oh the no way. You know, oh no those prayer chain letters uh, those other things that turn out to be uh, turn out to be false, turn out to be false. but it, I'll give you my my uh, you can Facebook me just look for Duncan Holmes you know you can friend me on Facebook um, okay Yes, and you can email me. It's uh, Piano Man, P I A N O M A N 46 at Austin, A U S T I N dot R R dot com. Our website, there, unfortunately, we had to take the guest book out because it was being sabotaged by hackers uh, from other countries, yeah. I believe. So, But we still have the rest of the site, and it's blind friendly. Uh, but the site it's http colon slash slash w dot duncan d u n c a n dash homes dot com and okay. if you're interested I put out an email newsletter that Harley gets and Robin gets it and oh uh, cool yeah and and the uh, homes is spelled h o l m e s correct h o l m e s I'm also on Skype but the gal who helped me set up Skype misspelled my name. So it's Duncan dot H O M E S and I have to live with it. <laughs> so, but uh, I forgive, <laughs> I forgive. But uh, anyway, this is uh, that's how to best get in touch with me uh, is by email, and also you can f- friend me on Facebook, Rob. Okay, so Piano Man forty six at Austin dot R R dot com, right? Yes, and cool. I ask you, I ask you, Susan, if you're still you used to be active with Intervarsity Christian Fellowship when I was when uh, we were in yes I was in, in grad student. I, I still donate to them. Um, I uh, am active in my church, uh, but anyway, I, I figured you know that was more of a uh, well. I'm retired now. I retired from the Social Security Administration a couple of Good. years ago, almost two years ago. Good after 37 and a half years, and yeah. um, I'm. Active in my church, St. John the Forerunner Orthodox Church, and uh, working, volunteering in the school down the street and some other places. So I'm having fun. I love talk it. To your, talk to your priest to see if they could have us come to Indianapolis. We'd love to come and share. Is it part of? Is it an Anglican church or is it one of the Eastern Orthodox? It's it's Eastern Orthodox, but sure you could come. We just don't at this point. We don't have. Uh, our, our fellowship hall is yet to be built, and we don't have a piano in the church. We just have a little keyboard that we use for choir practice, and that's it. But but oh, oh, one oh, of these I'm days, home. we will. <laughs> have a home <laughs> Oh, yes, that we too. A couple, other, a couple other concerts in the Indianapolis area. I've never played out there. closest I've been was Michigan. And, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'd love to have you come. Well, we'll All right, you know, I'm going to mute myself so other people can, okay? Sure. Okay. Anybody else? Hello, Duncan. Yes. Duncan? Yes. This is Barry. I just wanted to let you know I just came in and just wanted to let you know I'm here listening for a little while. Well, we're glad to have you, Barry. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm glad that you, so you know, just... we're gonna, they're going to be uh, recording this. Uh, it's being recorded for archive, and uh you'll probably be able to catch the whole thing in its entirety but stick around with us to the till the uh, conclusion here oh i'll do the best i can oh sure but i just wanted to let you know that that i'm here 
Well, it's good to have you on. Thank you. Barry, folks, is, uh, is, is, uh, was another school friend, and uh, I'm delighted to have, uh, to have her on as well. And uh, always grateful to have some school friends on. Okay. We have time for a couple more questions. John, Duncan, it's Bo Jane again. We did a, a thing that um, people wouldn't know on this group. Um, I used to have a couple of round robins about retinopathy of prematurity. And they were tape round robins, and Duncan was on one of them. That's right. And unfortunately, a couple of the people that were on the robin with us are no longer with us. So. Yes. Yes. Well, what is a round robin? Round robin is a tape uh, you have where you have a, a a tape mailer, and you have several tapes in the mailer, and each person gets one side of the tape, and you send it around in the mail, and uh, you, you usually use 60-minute tapes, and what you do is you label each tape in bra- each side in Braille, like number one would be Bob, number two would be Duncan, number three would be Robin, number four would be Barry, number five would be Don, number six would be uh, Joni, number seven would, do you understand? So then the tape would have... That there would be a an envelope with cards in it, and each person, when they would get it, would send it on to uh, number one, would send it on to number two, and number two would send it on to number three. And they would listen to all the comments, and then they would give their own comments when they sent the tape back. Do you understand? I understand. <laughs> and that was what a round robin was. Were and you guys in the voice bondance club? I was. I was, I was in the too. correspondence club for a very brief time, but they got real persnickety. This is when they still had their old reels. I was real too. Piece. Yeah, and they got really persnickety about how you had the rubber band on the thing, on the buckle. And I well, think that was know. Charles Owen. That was yeah. Charles Owen. Charles Owen was a rules guy, and if you follow his rules, if he didn't, if he didn't like you from the get go, then you were your name was Mud. And muddier and muddier. But if he got, if he liked you, you could break any rule in the book. <laughs> but if That's he didn't true. like you, you couldn't. <laughs> and and he, Melva was such a sweetheart. Yes. I know it. I know I really it. I liked her a lot. I was in two clubs. I was in voice bondance, and then I was in a club somehow. Uh, the Great Lakes Tape Club. That was another open reel club. Now this was mostly sighted people, but somehow they got my name. I don't know how it was. And uh, I had more success with Great Lakes Tape Club than I did with the Correspondence Club. But most, whether anybody was in a club or not, tape sponding was, was and still is something I do. Because I feel for those folks who don't have a computer, put out a, I put out an audio. I, yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I still do the tape correspondence. I've been doing it for 46 years. Wow. Yeah. And I've been doing it for nearly... And that's how I met my... You're up, yeah. And it's, that's how I met my husband through... Tape correspondence. I met mine through tape, my ex-husband through tape correspondence, through the Voice Bondance Club, actually. Wow. Oh, wow. I never knew that. You know, my turn and I taped for while she was in the Army, and we, like I said, we couldn't record, record so we, record, so we tape record, you know. But, uh, but I still tape to people that don't have computers, and even some that do, and put out a quarterly news, well, I try to put out a quarterly newsletter. Sometimes it gets a little difficult because I don't have all the modern equipment for all of that kind of stuff. But mm. I still put one out on cassette, and I'm hoping to go digital, put it out on like an MP3 CD or something like that as well. But mostly that it, it contains fun stuff that I do uh, or uh, music and uh, highlights of events that I've done and some of the tours I, I do record when I go on the road. And, uh, you know, like everybody's got their camera, i got my sound pictures. So there you go. Okay, well, I guess we have time for one or two more, right, Bob? About one or two more. Anybody that we haven't heard from yet might have a question. Yeah, speak now or forever hold your liquor. <laughs> well, I see you still there. Do you have a question? Yeah, somebody, somebody cut off? Not really. No, but everybody's still there, I guess. Well, apparently there are no more people ready to ask you anything mm-hmm. right now, so what I can do is take my opportunity anyway to... Thank you for sharing your time with us tonight and letting us know what you've been doing and how we can reach you and and the best of luck to you in the near future. 
and and well, beyond that. Well, thank you, Bob, and uh, I'm gonna have to, you got me interested now in look reading your books. Are they available through uh, Bard or through the National Library Service? They're available on Amazon.com and Smashwords and all, all of the other related sites. And you know, you can just go to www.dvorkin. That's D-V-O-R-K-I-N. dot com slash Robert Branco slash to get more info. So, so you're not to be confused with the guy the military book. So that's that's a different Branco, I guess. I guess. Don't know. <laughs> Yeah, no, there was another guy who said something about in, in the books about Navy, this and this and that. And I thought, oh, I think. Uh, but I have written four books. They're self-published. So that's why I didn't think you were confusing the two of them. Yeah. <coughs> oh, yeah. Bob, it's Marcy. Oh, yeah. Marcy, you have time for one question. Go ahead. I had trouble unmuting. Um, the question I have is I, I didn't, I didn't um, get into how you started did you have one particular po uh, point? Uh, okay, you had a question about how I started. I mean, started in my work. As far as you know, you 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 did talk about playing the music, but what gave you the the feeling of the particular music? Uh, okay, I'm not sure. Okay, yeah. What? What? In other words, what inspired you, Duncan? Yeah. Okay, that's what I want. All right, what inspired me to play? Well, that mm -hmm. even, I did not mention that, folks. I hope you're still with me. Uh, shortly, this was even before I came to the Lord, but shortly before, uh, uh, after my father's death in 61, my sister took me to Constitution Hall to hear Roger Williams. And I thought, ooh, I thought, ooh. That would be, I thought, I want to do that. I want to play. There just seemed to be something fascinating about playing. Ooh. I mean, and as much as I tried to kid myself, tried to tell myself, no, I'm not going to be, you know, going to a safe field or something, been much as, as much as these I was getting, as people tried to steer me in other directions, I tried some of those other directions. As, and, uh, but it but it was, uh, it, I could not stop myself from playing. I just wanted to play. And after I came to the Lord, that was, I, and I, I especially in graduate school, I, when I, you know, when I was finishing graduate school, I, that's when mm. I was convinced this is what I was supposed to do, and uh, this is what I've been doing. Very good. Okay. All right. Well, that's about it for this evening. And again, thanks, Duncan, and good luck in your endeavors moving forward. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back at some point. Would you like a repeat performance? I well, would love a repeat from Seth. I'm only sad that my sided friends that I invited to come on didn't. But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but I would love to. Uh, I would love to do a repeat.